Uh, this is a talk on financial planning conducted by the Financial Services Consumer Association. Uh, this topic is on how to invest your savings. The best way to invest your savings is in equities, uh, blue chip shares uh, with the aim to earn an average of more than 5% per annum over the long term. The yields on equities are not guaranteed, but they are much better than other asset classes. Uh, here are the return on the various asset classes for the past 10 uh, and 20 years. Uh, Singapore equities give a return of 9.2 per cent per annum over the past 20 years. Uh, this is higher than global equities which return 7.7 per cent and global bonds 5.5 per cent. You can see therefore that uh, equities uh, give quite an attractive return uh, higher than uh, bonds. Now, investing in equities uh, may appear risky, but there are ways to reduce investment risk. Uh, the first way is through diversification. That is, uh, you invest uh, in a fund which is invested in many shares. So you are not exposed to a small number of shares that you selected, uh, but your return is uh, based on the 10, 20, 30 or more shares uh, that are invested by the fund. The second method is to invest for the long term, that is uh, more than 20 years. During this period, uh, you are going to get some good years and some bad years. So your average return over this period uh, will be uh, uh, quite attractive. Uh, it was 9.2% uh, over the past 20 years. Uh, now, uh, by investing for the long term, you can average out the good and the bad years. And the third method is through dollar cost averaging. That is, uh, whenever you invest, you invest in small amounts and you invest every month or, uh, or over a few months at a time. But because you are investing over a long period of time, you are investing small amounts you are not exposed to buying uh, any share uh, when the market is too high. Uh, your purchases get an average price over the period. A dollar cost averaging also apply when you make your withdrawals. That is, you don't withdraw all your investments at one time, but you invest, you withdraw them in small amounts. <coughs> now, which fund do you choose? There are hundreds of funds uh, and the best uh, method is to choose a fund which has uh, low charges. I call this a low cost fund. Uh, make sure that the managed expense ratio, uh, that is the management fee and other expenses of the fund, is less than 1% of the uh, size of the fund. The expenses should be less than 1% every year and you should choose a large well diversified fund uh, and uh, a very good fund that uh, meet this criteria is the uh, Straits Times Index Exchange Traded Fund STI ETF that is offered by uh, uh, the company called SPDR or by uh, DBS now DBS has now been renamed as NIKO, N-I-K-K-O. Now these two ETF are available in the Singapore Exchange. Uh, they are large funds and they have low expense ratio. Now uh, a low expense ratio means more of the yield of the fund will go to you, uh, the investor. For example, if the fund earns 6% and the, and the expense ratio is 1% you will earn 
five percent. <coughs> if the expense ratio is three percent, you will only earn three percent after deducting expenses. The difference of two percent in the year means <coughs> you will get forty percent less at the end of thirty years. So it makes a lot of difference uh, whether you get uh, two percent higher or two percent lower in the yield. Now uh, the person who created the idea of uh, low cost uh, well diversified diversified fund uh, is Mr. Jack Bogle and I met him uh, in 2007 when I visited uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the office of the Vanguard Group in Pennsylvania. Now, the amount that you save for the future uh, can be used for various purposes. Uh, the uh, most important is the unemployment. During the next, uh, during your 40 years of working career, uh, many people, uh, a high percentage of people may experience uh, a certain period of unemployment and this is where uh, the savings become very important uh, to tide them over this period. Uh, it can be also be used for unexpected high medical expenses uh, for elderly people including your parents. It can be used uh, to fund education uh, for your children as well as for yourself and finally whatever is balanced uh, can be used for retirement. Now this table shows the, uh, a regular saving of 25% of earnings over a working career uh, and uh, uh, the amount that you're going to get at the end of 35 years uh, depend on your yield. Now the yield shown here are after deducting inflation. Uh, now most people uh, get a yield of just matching inflation and at the end of 35 years their savings will amount to 8.8 .8 years of their income at retirement. But if they were to earn 2% uh, higher than inflation uh, the savings become 12.7 years. Now compared to 8.8, .8, this is about 50% higher. So it's very important therefore that you should aim to earn 2% higher than inflation. Now if uh, your investment earns 3% and inflation is 2%, your real yield after deducting inflation is only 1%. Uh, now that is low. Now you will need to get a real yield net of inflation of at least 2%. Uh, you should look for investment that yield that offer a real yield of 2% <coughs> or higher. Now if you save 25% uh, of earnings during your working career and earn 2% uh, above inflation, at the end of 35 years you will get uh, total savings amounting to 12.6 years of your income but uh, you do not expect uh, uh, the savings uh, to be untouched because uh, you may need it for uh, unemployment for education and for medical expenses during this period if you spend half of uh, the total uh, in for these purposes, you still have 6 years of savings, uh, that is half of 12.6 years uh, for your retirement and this is adequate. So the benchmark is uh, to have 6 years of your earnings at the time you retire and these are after deducting inflation. Now you should aim to have 6 years of earnings at the time of retirement. So if you are earning $60,000 a year, your total savings should be $360,000. Uh, by that time you should have paid up 
your flat or your house uh, fully paid up and you can use the six years of accumulated savings uh, if you draw this down over 25 years uh, that's the average uh, lifespan of uh, a person uh, after retirement uh, you can get a monthly income of 30% of your earning prior to retirement uh, so if you were earning $6,000 a month your retirement income is $1,800 and this is comfortable for most people <coughs> if your savings at retirement is lower uh, you can uh, continue to work and retire later you can accept a lower standard of living or you can do some part-time work to supplement your income.